Well, uh, at the moment we uh, have uh, 24 people in the audience and uh, it's uh, one o'clock. So I suppose uh, we should start. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, all uh, members in the audience and I would like to uh, welcome uh, our speakers of today, Marjolein Bot of the Amsterdam Economic Board and Roberta Fedeccia. Fedeccia from uh, the VU uh, University, uh, from the Software uh, and Sustainability Department. And uh, we have uh, two presentations, uh, one from, uh, from Marjolein first, and afterwards uh, uh, Roberto uh, will uh, present. We have uh, a chat moderator, uh, my colleague Tessa from the Horst, who will uh, look at the chat and will uh, uh, at uh, some moments in the, the during the the, the, <coughs> the <coughs> this session, he will uh, uh, show what uh, what uh, what what was in the chat, and the, and the, the speakers can then uh, answer to the questions. Uh, we will have a small amount of time at the end for discussions and. Uh, my name is uh, Frank Hartkamp. I do, I'm chair. Uh, I'm from RVO. Um, and uh, today, uh, this uh, uh, webinar uh, will go on uh, the sustainability of ICT as an infrastructure and uh, what, uh, what, what things to look at uh, <coughs> at the horizon of two, 2030 and, uh, and further on. Um, this uh, session will be recorded and will be uh, published uh, after the, the Groene Paper has finished at uh, groenepaper.com. Uh, and uh, well, I hope we will have a good uh, session. And uh, I uh, like uh, Marjolein to, uh, to start. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you for having us. Um, it's actually the second year that we're here. Last year, um, uh, I uh, just introduced LEAP, our program, and, and the intentions and the ambitions, what we were going to do. And this year, I think we made some, well, good progress. So we're going to show where we are with, uh, with some of the stuff. Um, I work for the Amsterdam Economic Board. Um, that's a collaboration platform in the metropolitan area of Amsterdam, and we work together what we call Triple Helix. Um, collaborations between business, knowledge institutions and uh, government on transformation topics like digitalization, like sustainability, like energy transition, circular transition, etc, etc. Um, and Roberto will introduce himself later. He's from the VU University. Um, the objective today is that we would really like to build some awareness around sustainable digitalization um, we want to showcase the roadmap that the VU um, developed together with Photon Delta on what is needed to build a future, um, future proof sustainable um, uh, digital infrastructure. And we would like to get you involved as well. So apart from being able to put questions in the, in the chat function, we also want to use Mentimeter. And to get the juices going, we would like to um, um, get started with that. So if you could please go to menti.com and my colleague Bas Gerbandi one, one, uh, would like to um, run us through that. So menti.com on your phone. And the code is... Um, yeah, yeah, put it in the code in the chat. So, you can, yeah. uh, just so it's 85804988. And you will, we, you will um, show the slide, Bas, right? With yeah, the outcomes. I will. So the first question, it always takes a little bit of time to, for people to get in. So go to menti.com, code num 85804988. The first question is, how much time have you already spent using your mobile phone this morning? One hour, two hours, 10 minutes. Wow. Good. So 
So, wow, the two hours going to win, I think. Oof. Okay. So most, well, most people spend between one to four hours on their phone already um, in the morning. Okay, that's great. So second question, do you ever think about energy consumption in your, what we call digital behavior? Because being on the phone, watching Netflix, doing online shopping, do you ever, that's your digital behavior, right? So do you ever think about energy consumption? No. Oh. It's a good answer to say yes. <laughs> and probably it's um, also in line with the reason why you're here, because you want to learn more about it. So you, it's already somewhere in your, in your brain, which is good. Excellent. Okay, two more questions and then we're going to start. How much electricity did ICT consume, do you think, in, 19, in 2019? 1%, half percent, or 3%? Yes, good. You all read the papers very well. Yes, it's it's three percent. It's actually around the same amount of electricity that um, the uh, RNS is using as well, which is quite a bit. And the last question for now: To what percentage will production operation of ICT rise to in two thousand and thirty? Do you think? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually 21%. Um, the numbers vary a bit, um, but it's expected that the percentage will rise um, to tw uh, will rise with um, to 21% in uh, 2030, which is really quite a bit. So. There is a need to uh, to look at sustainability use of it, to look at energy efficiency, to look at energy effectiveness, and look at circularity. Can we go back to the slides, um, Roberto? What are we going to do to the... Second slide, yes. So what are we going to do today? I'm going to give a little, very short... Could you go to the next slide? Um, a very short introduction to the why and what of sustainable digitalization. Roberta will um, present the roadmap and then we're looking for more input from you. And um, um, yeah, have your mobile ready. We've done that. All right. So could you go to the next slide? I'm going to run this through quite a bit because we're, yeah. So next one. Yes. So our future is digital, right? If you look at, um, if you look at the past, oh, sorry. No, the previous one. Great. Our future is digital. So if you look at the past years, um, the digital um, use uh, has grown and it will grow dr well dramatically or exceptionally in the next 10 years. Um, and the pace that is driven um, innovations and operations will be increasing by a factor of 10 or something. Um, and as you've seen in the last year, actually, you know, it's changing quite quickly. Um, now that's due to, to Corona, we're working um, uh, at home, we order our groceries from home, we're watching Netflix, etc. So that ensures that even more data is now being generated, sent and stored, and this requires more energy. And up until now, it's going pretty well. I mean, I had some internet problems this morning, but over, you know, over the last year, I think um, the uh, that the our digital infrastructure can handle it very well. And that's also, next slide please, um, a good thing, because the Netherlands is leading. Um, and actually in the Amsterdam Metropolitan, um, we're in the top three of the data hubs. So we're, we are a really important area in that digital infrastructure. And why is that? Well, it's actually because we have a very stable energy supply. We have a high de degree of connectivity and we have a 
very favorable, stable political climate. Um, the Amsterdam region uh, it has traditionally been the hotspot because there's the um, the internet uh, exchange of what, what we call AMSIX. It's kind of like the, the hub where, where the internet is really, really quick, quickly. And as a result, you can see that 72%, and uh, maybe I think by now a little bit more, of the co-location data centers are located in the MRA. And if you look at the total in the Netherlands, the hyperscale campus near Middenmeer, the Microsoft campus, we also call it, um, together with um, the data center in the metropolitan area of Amsterdam is number one of the data center hub in Europe. Go to the next slide, please. So we, there's something at stake in the Netherlands. Um, we want to keep it here. It's our innovation backbone. Uh, it's really important for our future. But the infrastructure is physical as well. It's not that you say like, look, you know, it's in the cloud, so it's nowhere. No, it is really physical. And there's a lot actually needed um, uh, to, um, to, to, for our digital behavior. We need renewable energy, you know, in wind turbines at land or in sea. We need data servers. We need data centers. And um, that all, all has an impact on space and on material, as well as on energy. So just you know a medium-sized data center requires just as much electricity as a municipality such as demon so next slide please if you look at the uh, future i mean we all want it to be sustainable right we have our paris convention we have the climate accord um, and um, we um, need collaboration innovation and new business concepts to be really build it and if you look at it right i mean digital it's an enabler for everything and sustainability is on everybody's again agenda so if you combine the two um you are looking for sustainable digitalization my last slide roberto before we move to you that's why we actually um created and developed leap because we believe that the public private partnerships in this data um, uh, digital infrastructure is needed um, to develop it further. Um, and LEAP is, is building a platform for collaboration, knowledge sharing and communication to actually make a positive contribution to this, um, to a smart society where growth in the environment, where people um, go hand in hand um, in an energy efficient way and whilst we pre preserving critical materials. So that's, um, what we're aiming at. We have a coalition of the willing with a number of partners that, that we work with. And we do that around three themes. Um, uh, the technologies theme, um, distributed and circular. And one of the key deliverables that we've been working on and that the FU's been working on very intensively is on the technology roadmap. Um, and uh, let me hand it over to Roberto to talk to you about that. Thank you, Marilyn. Um... Hello to everyone, I am uh, Roberto of the Soft and Sustainability Group of the Fern University of Amsterdam. I'm a research associate there and I'm going to guide you through um, our, oh, sorry. <laughs> so our roadmap. Um, so what we see here are the solutions for energy efficient uh, digital infrastructure that will arise in three different horizons. Um, and with horizon number one, we're talking about the state of the art. Horizon number two will be the um, proximate future, so between four and six years. And horizon number three will be the solutions which will arrive after six years. In the first horizon, we see a first paradigm shift, uh, which is moving to the cloud. So um, transitioning to hyperscale data center. And the axiom that is needed uh, in order to deem such solution as energy efficient is that hyperscalers use um, heuristics to optimize their hardware energy consumption. Um, one prominent example here are green energy resources. So uh, the adoption of um, solar energy or um, wind farms in order to um, use uh, to, to um, get the energy in a more sustainable way, which is used. Um, we also see the rise of integrated infrastructure, which is, sorry, um, 
which is the development of hardware in tight collaboration between uh, software and hardware developers in order to um, accommodate particular needs of stakeholders, and also heuristics for hyperscale hardware management. During horizon number one, we also see the rise of energy-aware software solutions. So uh, designing and uh, refactoring software in order to let it consume less energy. And we also see uh, during horizon number one, uh, the arise of uh, social solutions, which in uh, its more primitive stage uh, regards the strategies for awareness creation that uh, will guide both developers in developing more sustainable software and uh, consumer to demand more uh, sustainable um, products. Finally, we also see the rise of domain-specific hardware. So in the chat before, someone mentioned uh, Bitcoin. You can think of uh, developing um, hardware-specific components such as GPUs, for example, for yeah, mining Bitcoin, which is not that efficient, or um, for example, for AI-based uh, software-intensive systems. In horizon number two, uh, we see um, more emphasis on social solutions, um, which we deem that at some point the sustainable ICT skills uh, will become um, more needed in industry. So the figures which will focus specifically on uh, developing ICT, uh, sustainable ICT products. We also see in horizon number two another paradigm shift which in this case is a more flexible, distributed, and disaggregated data management. Um, and you can think this of m moving more data and computational power uh, through the edge. Um, what makes moving more uh, computational power through the edge sustainable is also distributed energy landscape. So the appearance of prosumers so uh, stakeholders who not only uh, consume um, ICT services, but also make use of their own locally produced energy in order to shift from the high amount of energy uh, currently used by hyperscalers to a more distributed paradigm. Um, and we also see, of course, we have uh, uh, more and more emphasis on AI. So we will also see AI energy op optimization become more prominent in horizon number two. Um, similarly, another technical solution regards the dynamic software services and resource allocation in order to make best, best use of all the um, computational power which is distributed through the cloud as seamless as possible. Um, Similarly, we also see uh, the rise of strategic geolocation of digital infrastructure in order to move uh, computational power and data more uh, closely to the end user and to make use of the resources which are, uh, are available locally. Um, nowadays, hardware life cycle of uh, hyperscalers is quite quick. Uh, you can think of it being approximately two years before hardware is changed. Uh, this will not happen this prominently during horizon number two, as you will see the rise of uh, a further design for reuse. So, um, hardware components which can last for a longer time. Happening between horizon number two and three, we have also um, the, the appearance of uh, photonic technologies, both to uh, communication, to uh, establish communication between servers, and also what is called integrated photonics. So hardware-based components, which are based on the photonic technology. Hardware number three uh, sees the last paradigm shift we envision, which are hardware-based tools. And you can think this as a non von Neumann architecture, which uh, completely changed the picture on uh, the computer uh, computers that we're using nowadays. And here we're talking more about um, on one side, integrated photonics, uh, on the other one, neuromorphic computing, um, or even quantum computing maybe could be uh, deemed as a technology which can save energy. We also see the happening of uh, high density storage solutions, um, which and this hardware breakthroughs all need to be supported by uh, novel uh, software architectures. 
Um, moving on, we can zoom in a bit into uh, the energy aware software optimizations, which are organized in three different clusters. The one is, uh, first one is more software engineering centric. And here we see, uh, of course, energy driven software engineering, so refactoring of software in order to save energy. Um, a, a more uh, use on demand driven um, paradigm, so using resources only when they're really needed, which is only done to a, a little extent nowadays, which will be supported by event based software engineering. And we'll also see uh, workload optimization, um, further software virtualization, which will happen mostly at uh, hyperscalers, and during horizon number three, also energy-centered self-adaptation. So um, taping the, hard, the, the software uh, according to the available um, energy. Regarding the cloud-centric solutions, here we see um, what we call kill zombie systems, which is basically optimizing idle servers, so servers which are not uh, used to their full extent. Um, hardware virtualization, so having um, a seamlessly homogeneous uh, pool of hardware which is used. Um, more efficient data management solutions such as com non lossy compressions, and even virtual energy capping. So uh, limiting the energy which can uh, be used by, for example, a, higher a hyperscaler to a certain amount. AI will also, of course, uh, play a big role in the future. And here we see um, the appearance of uh, edge AI solutions, such um, as, for example, federated learning and even approximated computing. So making use of a solution which is uh, good enough instead of looking for the best solution, which often is not really needed and can be uh, really energy consuming. Um, Roberto? Yes? If I can break in, there's a question from the audience. Uh, Please. It, it, the question is, how exactly does software virtualization uh, uh, uses less energy in the approach? Yes. So this is part of the second paradigm, um, which regards uh, the, the disaggregation. And software virtualization can support in uh, making best use of uh, whatever computational power is um, closer to the end user, um, without the need of, for example, uh, nowadays, uh, if you say, okay, Google, that query is then, or hey, Siri, uh, that query is uh, sent to a very remote server, and then you get back a response. And with software virtualization, this can happen seamlessly uh, in, a, in a more energy efficient way since uh, this service is provided much closer to the user than uh, is done nowadays with hyperscalers. I hope this uh, answers your question. I think so, yes. Okay. So moving forward, we envisioned four uh, scenarios, which are incremental and um, are distributed among the three horizons. The first one, as we saw, um, was already a bit talked about, is uh, cloud centralization. So uh, moving a lot of services to the cloud. And this is a shift which is currently happening with uh, cloud native applications or uh, serverless applications. And um, the premise here is that by moving, uh, that the, the um, cloud providers have in place energy optimization, which are very cumbersome to obtain um, by small customers or uh, even private customers. The second scenario instead, which will happen um, in horizon number two, is flexible geolocation. And here we see um, a, more, a shift towards a more distributed paradigm, even if not completely. And what we see is on one side, we will still have uh, big hyperscalers, and on the other side, we'll have uh, micro clouds or um, small tasks which can be carried out uh, in proximity to the end user, such as, for example, the uh, example uh, I provided before. In the third scenario, we will have a seamless continuum. 
And what is meant here is that uh, software and hardware resources will be seamless, seamlessly shared um, and allocated at runtime, uh, which, allow, which will allow to make best use of energy where it is available. Finally, in our fourth scenario, uh, we'll see um, that the future will shape, shape itself by following closely time, space, and energy. And what is meant here is that at runtime, um, by considering the task at hand and energy availability and the criticality of uh, the service which is needed, um, a, a big pool of um, different micro clouds, edge um, components, and hyperscalers will be used in order to uh, make best use of, to provide the service with as much quality as possible while also saving as, as much energy as possible. Um, so our advice is, of course, um, to select the own focus. So always have your own focus in mind uh, uh, by considering uh, the cruciality of uh, your business and uh, the motor for uh, your personal change. And uh, what is all critical is uh, to define significant reporting. So uh, measure the impact, have a metrics in place and use uh, the measurements in order to uh, make the best decisions. And uh, of course, uh, it's an effort which uh, can't be done by a stakeholder alone, so we'll all have to jump on board on this. Um, we identified also open problems, impediments, and adoption factors. Uh, just to give you a brief uh, overview of um, some of the adoption factors, of course, uh, a prominent one is technology readiness, especially if we consider the hardware breakthroughs um, such as neuromorphic computing and other non von Neumann architectures, there might take some time before these are really production ready. Um, what is also crucial and it's more of an economic concern is a holistic paradigm shift. So again, uh, the shift that we have seen cannot be carried out by uh, only one stakeholder or uh, or few, but it has to be a, a holistic uh, paradigm shift. Um, regarding some of the open problems related to the holistic paradigm shift is the need for a coordinated change. And, um, this is also related to a scattered landscape, which has to need to be avoided in order to um, have all the stakeholders at the same level. Um, what we also identified is a lack of guidance, which is currently missing, and uh, hope that the, the roadmap uh, provides this to a certain extent. Um, of course, uh, one last environmental concern I want to bring your attention on is energy availability, which while um, Green resources are part of the solutions. This can only be a temporary solution because um, as the ICT energy demand grows, it will take a portion of green energy resources out uh, of, for example, the private domain. Um, this concludes my short overview of uh, the roadmap. If you have any further questions, now is a good moment to ask. There are some questions. Tessa, would you like to go through them? Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, there is one question, and it says cloud native development is key in more efficient use of infrastructure. But how can we accelerate this process? How to accelerate moving to the cloud? Um, well, there, there are, there is currently a trend. Um, trend in moving uh, to the cloud. This is not always feasible. It, it, it's really domain dependent and application dependent, but um, it, it depends on the domain considered. So in some cases, uh, some minor refactoring can move to uh, even cloud native applications. 
in some other times you have to have a complete rewrite from scratch of a software intensive system in order to make it uh, cloud ready. How to accelerate it is hard to answer. It, it depends really on the domain, but I think uh, cloud providers nowadays uh, make a very good job in making moving to the cloud uh, as, as easy as possible. Does that answer your question, Imke? In the meantime, uh, Leo asked, is there a manual for mail, frugal mail usage? For mail usage? Yeah. Is there a manual for uh, everyone? Perspective to 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 start then uh, more from user perspective and end user do to prevent uh, oh uh, using too much energy in uh, using your mail. Okay, so um, there are uh, some services in place that can uh, track the sustainability of the software services you use. Um, in the most uh, naive uh, way, you can check for um, what energy sources your uh, provider is using. So if they're using green energy sources or not. And this is also done um, for a lot of websites. And yeah, but more. Yeah. Yep. And I think the for how you use email yourself is also of big impact, and we will we will run through that um, as well in a bit. Um, it make, can make a difference um, in the energy uses of um, how you use your um, your email. There was one question from Marijke: How many years does your roadmap spend? Then, so how, how, what is the, the time frame we consider? Um, so we start with uh, today, then we have the horizon number two, which is um, four, six years, and horizon number uh, three is beyond six years. Uh, of course, the more you look into the future, the harder is uh, to foresee what will happen. But uh, what we can tell that in the, the, the long term future, um, harder breakthroughs will play a prominent role in energy efficiency. So okay. there is no end date, but uh, hard to, to foresee in the very long term what will happen. We'll have to see a bit. The technologies from the Horizon 3 will run past 2030, I think. So let's let's. Yes. Let's um, finish up the questions, just looking at time as well, because we want to get some input from you. Please go back to humanity.com. Thank you, uh, Roberto. Um, Thank you. And the question is, what did you find? Bas, will you? Yeah. yeah. What did you find most remarkable, notable, striking in the roadmap? It might be hard to read. So the first option is there are so many te technological innovations or the scenarios to move away from centralization to more distributed system. I have to look at here. Um, or that there's so much to win with green software. Or maybe um, you've been blown away by the neuromorphic computing stuff. Oh, it's a nice um, um, spread out. And I think, um, uh, Roberto, you focused a lot on the uh, technology uh, pieces. Um, but one of the things that um, when I read it, um, um, what, 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 was, what struck me was that there are so many technological uh, solutions, but there's also so many non-technological -techno solutions that we can work on to make the innovation, to drive the innovations forward. So I think that's uh, 
one of the things that we need to uh, pick up as well. Totally. Okay, so most people say the scenarios, I can't read it here, the scenarios to move away from centralization to more distributed, yeah. I can imagine that's quite a different, that's quite a shift in, 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 um, in mindset, actually, if you hear all the stories about big, bigger, biggest, um, um, which indeed is um, energy efficient, but it might not be the smartest and the most future-proof way to uh, to deal with it. Especially if you look at the um, technologies that um, that come on the market um, soon. Okay. Next question: How did this session help you in your knowledge of a sustainable future digital infrastructure? How that can be achieved? It's an open question, so or an open question, so you can just. Yes, and Ali, uh, Alejandro, I, I see the, um, your uh, question. Yes, we were we will be sharing the slides with you. Yes, very nice, very good. It's a broad overview, which I have to translate into possible actions. That's exactly where we are now with LEAP. How to, what to take forward. We can't take forward everything, but we need to, um, to look at the most viable um, uh, options. Yeah, swing back from centralized, yeah. New narrative. Yeah, the um, somebody saying that with the overview, how to combine the different technologies and and solutions into um, into the scenarios. Ah, I'm quite puzzled. What can I do myself? That's a very good leeway into the last little bit of this session. Thank you for that. Some option can go quicker, like data management store um, on one location. Yes. Yeah. Low hanging fruit to uh, to look at awareness. Yes, thank you. Very helpful. Very helpful. So let's um, spend the last couple of minutes on um, what you could do. I mean, a couple of people mentioned it in the chat, and a couple of people are um, uh, putting it here on the on the Mentimeter as well. What can you do? Um, I have one slide for you with some tips and tricks, um, which I think everybody should know. Um, and as everybody who's working on computers or spending hours on their, on their phone should actually know. Um, hence, the awareness is very important. What could, you do to re what could you do to reduce, well, not to reduce my digital footprint, but of course, to reduce your digital footprint? Um, I won't go th through them all of, I, don't, I won't go through all of them. But there's, there's something to do with sharing files, right? Sharing big files via email. It's much better to actually forward a link so people can just pick it up and make this, uh, the, the size of the, 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 the file smaller. There's something to do with the amount of newsletters, um, chain mails, petitions, funny images, et cetera, et cetera, that's going around. Um, I actually deliberately... Um, took my name out of all the newsletters I didn't read. And I, I came up, there were like 20 of them or something, which actually had quite a big impact on my on my uh, personal email box, which was quite nice. Um, and there are some actions, simple actions you can do on, um, on the website, like entering the address, um, like uh, using very precise keywords, like um, saving the sites that you visit, et cetera, et cetera. And there's something to do with using your uh, smartphone with optimizing optimization functions on your smartphone. Um, we'll share this list as well, and I hope everybody can can have a look um, um, and um, and uh, and work on it. I mean, and this is just a very 
um, broad uh, list of things. I'm just looking at the quick uh, at the chat. Um, yes, Marek, you're right. These things only add up to a very little reduction. That's right. But um, uh, you have to start somewhere, and I think this won't this won't change the um, the the whole world. But I think. Um, the same as goes with, you know, um, turning the light off and when you're not in a room, this is kind of like being more aware of the impact that it has when you're when you're online and that it doesn't just go, you know, without any uh, without any footprint. Um, one last Mentimeter question we do have, Ross. Yep. Very good. And one of the things that actually is not on here, but I think is a very big impact, is the leading, you know, the majority of, of, of documents sitting on your um, in your cloud, photos from 20 years ago that you never look at, et cetera, et cetera. I think that um, makes, if everybody does that, I think that could make quite a big impact. But it also takes some work to, to do that. Okay, what steps are you willing to take to make your own role, uh, digital role, more sustainable? What would you like to focus on if you would you know choose one or two things yes To make the files less heavy, it's quite easy to do actually. And specifically, if you're aware of doing it, then it's actually quite a um, just a way of working. Deleting emails, yeah, not distributing. Good. That's a nice. Uh, um, it's a nice list of um, of things that. Um, we can all do fantastic. And then the last question, how would you um, and others um, become more aware of sustainable digitalization? What would you do to um, make others um, become more aware? How would you spread the word? what is needed there. Publish more on energy used. So kind of like your own personal digital, digital um, um, uh, label or something. Okay. Previous slide with me, my organization. We will do that. Being a role model, yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, share the work. We will do. What we actually will do with um, the the more scientific focused roadmap that we have now, we um, we are creating a public version for it, for it that we can um, uh, that we are going to publish widely. Um, so that actually should uh, trickle down to all the IT related uh, um, people out there. Clean data in my organization. Great, excellent, fantastic. Thank you. Roberta, would you like to um, take a minute and close? Thank you so much for this input. Yes. Fantastic. I'll just summarize. Um, e takeaways of this presentation. As we saw, IT energy consumption is expected to in steadily increase in the future. There's no way out of it. Uh, so action has to be taken to invert this trend. And as I briefly mentioned, uh, the use of green energy sources is only a temporary solution because it will not be sufficient. So the general goal is to maintain um, the current energy consumption of digital infrastructures uh, with the increase of data growth. Um, 
software and hardware ecosystems uh, did not yet realize the promise of flexibility and adaptability and energy driven digital transformation, but uh, we expect this to happen during horizon number two. And so there are numerous solutions available, um, which range from social to environmental to technical. And we also have the different scenarios in which these solutions can be combined in order to move uh, towards uh, more sustainable digital infrastructure. One key factor is that energy scarcity uh, needs to become a new design and operation decision. So um, what is needed is not to think that we can use that energy inf is infinite because it is not. So we'll have to think uh, of our use and development of uh, ICT by thinking that uh, energy is scarce. And of course, in order to progress, we need uh, evidence, metrics, uh, awareness, transparency, and accountability, both for stakeholders such as uh, cloud providers and consumers um, regarding energy efficiency. This, uh, of course, um, we, if you want to join the action and you think of doing a master, we have uh, a master focusing on uh, software engineering Granity, which uh, is great. I did it myself. It's very engaging, and also a program on uh, information science, which is uh, more uh, towards uh, ethics and responsibility of uh, digitalization. Uh, this concludes uh, our presentation. Uh, if you want to read more, we have um, a technical report available online, and of course, you can always uh, mail us if you have any further questions. Okay, thank you, uh, Roberto. I think uh, we uh, we have to finish. We have Maybe to we close. Have a few more. A few more. Um, if you have uh, any questions and we have time, maybe I can we can take a few more questions. Otherwise, we can close. Let's say still. Uh, where the chess? Uh, well, there's not really a question, but more like an option we can do. Maybe we can uh, set real prices on data transport and storage since it's too cheap now. That will be a solution, yeah. of course. Yes, uh, actually, uh, we, we call this in the roadmap. Um, Activating taxation strategy. So, just as um, other goods on the market, if energy uh, is available in abundance, then it can cost less, and otherwise it can cost more. So, think about using a service uh, at nighttime or daytime, uh, data consumption, um, the energy consumed by the service changes, and so should also the price of energy consumed. And we Frank, maybe you know this. Uh, where uh, will uh, where can they find the slides? Oh. Yes, we uh, have slides of and uh, will be on a green paper for the the finish of the content. For further information on Leap, you can look at uh, the website of the Amsterdam. Yes. So, thank you all. Have a great day. Would like to, uh, thank you. I would like to thank and Robert and Bas and I hope you have the other sessions Friday at paper.com. Bye. Thank you.